everybody. I'm gonna talk a little bit louder because I'm in the hood today. I just wanted to make a real quick video to show you how I pour agar, agar, all your plates. <laughs> you also start saying it like we do in Michigan. <laughs> auger. <laughs> Which if you're from Michigan, you know auger is for uh, ice fishing drilling holes. Anyway, I want to show you guys real quick. I know there's a million videos about this, but I wanted to show you real quick how I did it. I got my standard, uh, I think this was PDA today, to be honest, I don't remember, 2% uh, potato starch, 2% auger, and about like uh, 0 0.0, or 0.1% 0 uh, yeast, just baker's yeast. And uh, I'm gonna pour about 20 plates, so I got my plates already out here. I'm wearing gloves, you guys, I'm gonna spray them with my 70%. I don't care what people on the internet tell you, if you are pouring plates without gloves on, you're wasting your time. Uh, and you're wasting resources and you're just wasting so that here, here, here we go do this math you guys one pair of gloves costs about five or ten cents that stack of plates and my media and my time costs probably 10 or 15 bucks which one do you want to throw away you want to throw away a stack of 20 or 40 or 60 plates because you couldn't be bothered to put on a pair of gloves bad bad idea just wear the gloves you'll never see anybody in a lab not wearing gloves doing this for the people that are out there, they say, oh, you know, they want to save resources, da 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 da. Well, again, what do you want to throw away? A single pair of disposable gloves, to be honest, you can reuse. Just spray them with alcohol. Do you get literally you wash these gloves, right? While you're wearing them, wash them, soap them up, wash them, put them up, let them dry, use them again. Like, so I don't want to hear that crap about, oh, I don't wear gloves to pour auger plates. Uh, like, it's stupid. If you don't wear gloves to pour auger plates, I'm sorry, but that means you've never worked in a lab and you don't know the proper way to do it. Okay, so every time I touch something and I touch the edge of this plate, I'm either introducing contamination, and if you're buying plates from somebody that doesn't wear gloves when they pour them, they have introduced every bit of their fingerprints, their skin cells, and whatever dirt they've touched on the edge of that plate. So when you get it at home and you open it, and then you do something else, now you're introducing whatever they had, you know, contact, right? This is how viruses and bacteria spread by contact mostly, either that or particles, which again, I'm gonna do this and I am gonna stop talking because you should never ever talk. This is one of those things when, you're, when your agar, agar gets to the right temperature, which is just a little bit, a little bit warmer than is comfortable. So it's about 42 degrees Celsius. I think it's like 112 Fahrenheit. So it should be like, if you hold it like that, it should be a little bit painful, at least for me, because I'm kind of a whim. Um, <laughs> but so yeah, you can see you can see from the viscosity also, that could really depend on how much, you know, agar you put in there and whatnot. But anyway, when I do this, I'm just gonna show you real quick. Uh, so you wanna do this as quick as possible. That's it, no talking. As quick as possible, whether you're in an SAB or whatever, I used to use flame, I used to, like, I don't know, my friend told me that was like basically a stupid idea and she was right. Uh, this has been in the autoclave under there, as long as no water or air or any foreign material is sucked inside, this should be sterile. So as soon as I take this off, I'm gonna put it aside, I'm just gonna sort of eject it out the back here, and then I'm gonna try to pour all of my plates at one time. Also, with a 500 mil volume, once this hits like 42C or 112 or starts to cool off, it'll solidify. So notice I keep shaking it around like this. If you've got undissolved components in the bottom, you wanna make sure they're homogenized and then distributed throughout that, that uh, agar medium, agar, agar, I don't even know how to say it now. So here we go. Again, uh, fungi I don't care if it's clear, if it's pink, if it's blue, if it's whatever. Jellan, agar, they don't really care. Um, as long as you get it in a plate and it's sterile, fungi will grow on virtually anything. Uh, I made like ramen noodles, spaghetti agar, you can use the grain, boil water, as long as it's got 2% agar in it, uh, that's pretty much all you need. Um, again, literally, like any sugars, carbohydrates, whatever. Peptone, eh, don't need peptone. Unless you're, unless you're growing some very specialized fungi, uh, or maybe some, some kind of parasite or a, a symbiont, you do not need anything special. It's just literally malt extract, potato starch, polenta, some kind of carbohydrate source, and, and, and agar, agar. And the yeast, uh, I, the low beef, the low nutrient medium that I've been using, they, they, I usually um, maybe drop it down to like 1% 
malt extract and put a little more yeast in it, and they really, really seem to develop the rhizomorphic growth. Um, I don't know. Uh, you have to play with it. I, I'm not too bothered, to be honest. If you're really into, into recipes, maybe you should be a baker. <laughs> no. Some things you need recipes for. Agar, you don't. As long as it solidifies and it's sterile, you're all good, man. If it's even a little bit soupy, as long as it stays in there, it's all good. It'll look funny. So, I'm gonna spray uh, my hands with alcohol again. And again, I'm gonna let that kinda evaporate a little bit. Otherwise, when I start grabbing these, they'll just be slippery. Again, alcohol, you know, it, uh, here's the thing I learned. Oh, you see over there, I've already poured some plates, so I already poured like two plates. Some of them are probably already solidified. Uh, another thing you can do while I'm, while I'm talking here, you can stack them up like this. Be really careful when they're still still uh, so people they don't like the condensation to be honest I'm gonna let these sit in the hood for a day or two and just use them uh, you can see here I also cover them up with a plastic bag this is a sterile PP5 bag just turn it upside down and just like a sock you know like kind of like an upside down sock or like you put like a hoodie you know one of those like ski mask on <laughs> uh, or or whatever they're called now um, one of those things uh, so yeah, again, they, they, a little bit of that humidity, you can see there's a little tiny bit of humidity on there. Um, these aren't quite solidified yet, so I don't want to pick one up, but that'll evaporate well after a day or two. Uh, maybe three. So I don't know, you can stack them up. Sometimes I don't even stack them up. The only reason I really stack them up is to get them out of the way. Um, so here we go. I'm going to stop talking. So I've got 21 plates, 500 mil. That should do me just about right. You get really, really good at this. And again, like I said, I'm gonna stop talking as soon as I take this off. And if you do have to stop, you may wanna flame it. I don't know. Uh, if you manage, the one thing, try not to get things dripping down the side because when I tilt it and then I put it down, if I'm gonna re-pour all of that stuff, remember that's dirty out there. So this is just some little tips. I'm probably leaving out a bunch of stuff, but I've done this a few times, so feel free to ask questions. But as soon as I get this off, I'm gonna stop talking. So yeah, I'm gonna get this in the sink as quickly as possible before, I, you can see it's dirty. 
And I put this in the pressure cooker. I don't care really how dirty it is, to be honest. If you want to spend your time cleaning these and make them look pretty, uh, that's up to you. I don't really care. Um, again, I don't really care about clear agar. Agar. Oh, I'm getting a little bit complex now. Agar. I never say agar to other people. Um, I always say it when I make these videos. Anyway. That's the deal, you guys. Um, I hope that was helpful. Like I said, I'll stack those up after about five minutes when they cool down just a little bit. I don't want to spill any of them. And uh, the other thing, again, to get this in the water as soon as possible, it'll, it'll clean up easier. Uh, the other thing, notice how I kind of did a little dip. Like, if for you boys out there, you know that little dip, that you pee pee? Well, that's exactly it, right? When I go from plate to plate, I don't want to drip. <laughs> Maybe girls got to do it too, but it's a little harder for you, I guess. Uh, the other thing is, is notice I never put this down. So once you start this process, don't like put it down, go have a cigarette and come back. Don't do that. Like that's just stupid. Number one, your agar will solidify. And number two, like it'll get just all kinds of contaminants floating around, especially if you're working in an SAB or with an FFU, like a, a vertical FFU, there's going to be things that fall in there. You can, I have known people, I know somebody who did it until recently, uh, used to do this open air, like on her desk. Uh, that's scary, you can do it. Uh, but again, this is the way I do it. So anyway, I guess the video's getting quite long. So I, uh, thank you guys for listening. Sorry it was so loud and sorry I went off on my soapbox again, but I get excited sometimes. Wear your gloves. Bye-bye. <laughs>